Following independence of Tanganyika in 1961 and following the union of Zanzibar and Tanganyika in 1964, the first project of the World Bank with the United Republic of Tanzania was approved in November 1965. The World Bank is now celebrating 50 years of active partnership with the government of Tanzania. Tying ourselves to particular nations or particular bilateral arrangements, sometimes there are too many demands for reciprocal give and take. And so we want a more neutral institution like the World Bank to be involved in supplying with all for development here. In 1967, through the Arusha Declaration Initiative, the government took control of the economy by nationalizing banks, major agricultural processors, insurance companies, export trading companies, and primary industries. Under uh, the socialist system, the government becomes the leading player in the economy and the business risk is all with the state. It's very difficult to maximize efficiency there because the individual, you know, doesn't suffer when an enterprise makes, makes losses. The theme of poverty reduction really was, became very strong in the World Bank during those years. Mimi, Ali Hassan Mwini, On November 5th, 1985, Honorable Ali Hassan Mwini became the second president of the United Republic of Tanzania. At that time, Tanzania was facing an economic crisis. At that time, we had around 400 parastatal organizations and they were all making losses. I thought the first step uh, to be taken is to liberalize our economy. It was a, a partnership, as I understand, between a group of World Bank staff and a team of Tanzanians, university uh, professors and students who came together as a team and who started advising the government on this agenda of reforms. The mid to eight, uh, late 80s, Tanzania was well into implementing some of these harsh programs, supported by a Mwini government that was really uh, keen to engage and keen to adopt uh, the recommendations of the Bretton Woods institutions and some stabilization started happening even during the many years, the liberalization, privatization. Mimi Benjamin William Mkapa. When President Mkapa came in uh, 1995, the focus then uh, became about institutionalizing the reforms, putting more structure into the reformed uh, economy, but also a big focus on the macro, having stable macroeconomic policies and stable uh, fiscal management. In April 2000, the World Bank Group's International Development Association, IDA, and the International Monetary Fund, IMF, agreed to support a comprehensive debt reduction package for Tanzania under the enhanced heavily indebted poor countries HIPIC initiative. I feel satisfied that we put state finances on a sound basis, so much so that our partners from the World Bank to bilaterals felt that we were entitled to debt relief. From the year 2000, we decided that every Zanzibari had to be given the opportunity to go to school. The financing part of it was a bit difficult for the government to sustain. So we had approached the World Bank for us to get a loan from the World Bank. Uh, I remember about $40 million at that time to build 19 new secondary schools, you know, spread across Zanzibar. And by now those schools have already been built and those primary school students whom we had built primary schools for them now have easy access to secondary education. I visited Malawi and, um, and President uh, Muluzi um, took me around to the countryside and he had a system there of what he called the, the Social Action Fund. And I liked it very much. What did it do? It said people themselves must determine what is development for them. What are the needs so that they can feel that they are developing. Once they have established that, then they must be prepared to say how much will they be able to summon in terms of financial as well as uh, physical energy to realize this, this, this goal. 
Once they have done that, then they can come to government and say, this is as far as we can do. Can government help us? And the government can then look to the World Bank or to bilaterals and say, this is a good program for community development and transformation. Help us with this one. So that is how we started the Tanzania Social Action Fund, TASAF. And now they're even going to the level of the poorest the poorest, I mean in the sense of, of real poverty, in the village itself. Nashukuru sana hii tasafu, imenisaidia kiasi kidogo, kulikuwa na mtia, nilikuwa niliguliwa mtoto, nilimpata matatizo, nikaenda paka KCMC, do nimelipa ayo madeni likuwa nadaiwa. Ingine nae tukalipia mtoto yuko dasa latano, na mungine yuko chekechea. Tulikuwa na maisha magumu sana. Sasa, sasa hivi kwa kutupatia hizi pasenti, Kwa kweli tuna unafu. Nimejiunga na CTF ni kanunua na mtama. Manake nikuwa na kidogo uchakula kidogo. Mimi ya kaya mrisho kikwete na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi za urai, zangu za uraisi wa jamuri ya mungano wa Tanzania. The World Bank has been there in, in almost in, in all sectors. If you go in, edu, in education, the World Bank has been there supporting us in agriculture, in the roads infrastructure, in the railway sector where the, 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 where the World Bank has, has been a key, key, key support of our development endeavors, in the power sector, and in the water sector, in the, the tourism sector. Between 2005 and 2015, I think we had a portfolio of about 4.4 .4 billion. And fortunately, the money has been spent well. In 2009, World Bank financed $44 million for the extension of the Abeid Aman Karume Airport runway from 2,560 meters to 3,022 meters in Zanzibar. The existing apron was 21,000 square meters. And under this project, we have constructed 49,000 square meters. So we have a total of 70,000 now. For the taxway, before it was three taxway, and now we have six taxways. Quite recently, I've read that uh, there's almost about 300,000 300, tourists have come to Zanzibar last year, which is actually the, the, the highest that ever, ever happened. We know that over the next 15 years, the labor force of Tanzania will double. And we'll need to have more than 20 million jobs created over the next 15 years. The rules have to be applied, but in a simple way, so that massive amount of investment can actually create the economic activity and jobs needed. The World Bank has been a key partner, a pivotal partner in the development, both on the advisory side, they've advised us well. We would not have been here when it comes to microeconomic stability. The growth rates that, that we are thanks in many ways to the advice from, from the World Bank and the IMF as well, because the IMF has been taking care of the fiscal, f fiscal policies. So when you combine the, the, the monetary and fiscal policies and the other, the, the other, the other macroeconomic policies, we, we, we are at this stage thanks to the partnership that we have had with the World Bank, the IMF, and, and men, men of our, our, men of our development partners. My humble appeal to the bank, as we celebrate 50 years at a time when I'm leaving office, they'll continue to work with the, with, with, with the next administration and the many administrations that, that are going to come.